Hello everybody, so now we continue on with chapter 4 and we're looking at learning objective 4-5. So now we're looking at exactly how is this non-controlling interest going to uh, modify or affect our financial statements. So there's four areas that we need to focus on uh, in terms of the non-controlling interest. Uh, we have the non-controlling interest um, at the beginning and at the end of the year. We have the non-controlling interest net income and then the non-controlling interest dividends. So let's take a look at an example. We have King Company acquires 80% of Pond Company um, 100,000 shares on January 1st, 2017 for $9.75 per share uh, for a total of 780,000 cash. So they're not paying a premium as we looked at in the previous example. In this case, uh, we just have that the average uh, per share price is $9.75. So the same price will apply also to the non-controlling interest. So we have the controlling interest fair market value, and then we have the fair value of the non-controlling interest for a total fair value for this subsidiary of 975,000. Now we can continue on with our calculation. We have the total fair market value. Now we can compare that to the total uh, book value of Pond Company on January 1st, 2017. Uh, we have a difference which is allocated to uh, trademark and patent technology that were undervalued, equipment that's overvalued, and then liabilities that were overvalued. I kind of highlighted that because we didn't really look at liabilities uh, too much in the previous chapters. So here we are introduced more to liabilities. And we have that aside from trademark and goodwill, of course, uh, the rest have uh, uh, a term life, a useful life. And so we are calculating the amortization. So we have a net annual amortization of $10,000. Okay, goodwill was $25,000. So uh, two or one year or two years later, December 31st, 2018, uh, we look at the analysis of the investment in Pond Company. We have the acquisition price as of January 1st, 2017. Uh, then we have also that Pond Company had income of 70,000 and dividends of 10,000. Oh, I'm sorry. It had uh, income of 70,000 in 2017. And so remember that under the equity method, all right, uh, we have to apply the percentage. So this is in the parents' company records. So we're applying King Company's ownership percentage to net income dividends, and uh, also amortization. So I want to highlight that because in previous chapters, we own 100%. So we didn't have to do this allocation for amortization. But going forward, since we own less than 100%, but we still have control, then we're going to have to use a percentage for our amortization. So in the current year, 2018, uh, we have that, uh, you know, our income was 90,000, amortization 10,000 for the subsidiary that multiplied by 80% is the parents' um, equity and subsidiary earnings that they reported in their own financial statements, and then the dividends in pawn again, 80%. So we come out to uh, an investment in pawn balance as of December 31st, 2018 of 852,000. So pay attention to these figures as we move on to the consolidation worksheet. Okay, so we are presented with uh, the financial statements of King and Pawn, and then you're asked to consolidate these financial statements. Now we have the equity and subsidiary earnings in King's records, all right? 
uh, the 64,000 that we calculated in the previous slide. And then we have on the balance sheet, the investment in Pond Company of 852, which was also detailed in the previous slide. So we begin doing our consolidation entries. So we have pretty much the same entries as we had in Chapter 3, uh, except that here we're accounting for the non-controlling interest. Okay, so we have to entry S was to eliminate pawns, in this case, the subsidiary's equity. So we're debiting common stock, we're debiting beginning retained earnings, and we're crediting the investment in pawn company, but 80%, okay, 80% of this, and the other 20% goes to the non-controlling interest. The same thing with entry A. Uh, we had that the trademark was overstated, uh, I'm sorry, uh, not overstated, I'm getting confused. Uh, trademark was understated. Uh, the patented technology was understated. Liabilities were overstated. And then the equipment is overstated. Okay, and we also had goodwill. So that was recognized um, in, the, or actually we found out this from our calculation in the previous slide on the date of acquisition, January 1st, 2017. Uh, so this means that these figures uh, are reduced by the annual amortization. Okay, so pay attention to that too. Uh, that would be for any of those that were depreciated. So let me just go back uh, just to make sure. So we had for patenting technology, we had 120,000. For the equipment, we had 10,000 and long-term liabilities, 40,000. Okay, so look, it's 114 because we subtracted uh, the 6,000 in amortization. The same thing with our liabilities. Okay, it's been reduced. It was 40,000. Now it's 35 because this is the second year. And the same thing with the equipment. So keep that in mind. Okay, so this is subsequent years. You guys uh, learn these topics in Chapter 3. Okay, we have also our entry I, and entry I is just to eliminate the equity in Pond's earnings. This is from King's records, okay? Uh, so we're eliminating that. We're uh, eliminating the dividends uh, that, Pond, um, that relate to Pond uh, on King's records as well. Um, and then we have our beloved entry E, where we have the amortization related to the patented technology. Uh, we have interest expense that relates to liabilities, and then we have depreciation related to equipment. Uh, so an observation. So the only two entries that have account uh, that they have been modified from what you learned in Chapter 3 is basically uh, consolidations entry S and A which we added in non-controlling entries. For all the other entries, they're pretty much the same. So we've come to the consolidation entries, um, I'm sorry, the consolidation worksheet, and we can see that we have added one more column here for the non-controlling interest, okay? Uh, and so we're gonna go ahead and record anything that relates to the non-controlling interest as we stated uh, you know, in, at the beginning of this presentation. So I just kind of wanted to uh, revisit the uh, non-controlling interest net income calculation. Uh, we looked at this in a previous slide. So we have that calculation here. We begin with PONS uh, net income of 90,000. We subtract the net amortization amount, which was 10,000. So we have an adjusted net income of 80,000. The non-controlling interest percentage is 20%. So our non-controlling interest net income is 16,000, okay? And so we have our consolidated net income less our non-controlling interest net income is our consolidated net income that pertains to the controlling interest. And then we have 20% uh, of the dividends, 
all right? And we have the addition of uh, the allocation to non-controlling interest from entries S and A, uh, which we looked at in the previous slide. And so the addition of all these items uh, adds up to 213,000, that's the ending balance of our non-controlling interest, and that's uh, reported on the equity section of the balance sheet, the consolidated balance sheet. So in the previous slides, we looked at the consolidation worksheet. So now we go into the financial statements of King Company, our example in the previous slides, to see how are we going to uh, include the non-controlling interest on the consolidated financial statements. So we have our consolidated income statement of King Company and Pond Company. We can see the consolidated net income and the non-controlling interest net income as it was shown on the worksheet. And we have our controlling interest net income as a result. We also have to uh, report it on the a statement of changes in owner's equity. We see the non-controlling interest changes uh, with the balance as of January 1st, uh, plus the net income that was allocated and uh, the dividends, less the dividends that were allocated to the non-controlling interest. So this 213,000 ties to our consolidation worksheet as well. So on the consolidated balance sheet, once again, we have the 213,000 our non-controlling interest represented on the equity section of the balance sheet. 